RTFM. Mm. Anyway, use this front derailleur guide to set the front derailleur, the height and the angle. If you don't have one of these guides, you can read the manual and they have specs on where you need to set it. And we just slide this guide and onto the big chain ring. I'm gonna torque this hanger bolt. And then simply rotate the crank backwards, pop the tool out. Nifty. We install our headset. We got that compression ring in the bottom. We got this sleek aero cap here on top of that. 30 millimeters of spacers. We got a sufficient gap between the top of the stem here and the top of the steerer tube. It's not below that upper bolt here. I'm gonna torque our compression bolt. Now that that's torqued, I'm gonna apply some preload to our headset. As you can see, it's just loosey-goosey right now. There's no torque spec on a headset because really we just want to just get it tight enough so that you eliminate any play, but it's not so tight that you can't steer. Tram and zip like they're torques wrenches, so we just use torque T, Torx T25 on the top cap and the stem bolts. This is an alloy bar and stem, so I'm not gonna use any carbon paste. I don't really like to use grease on them either. It's just a little messy. That's how I keep these builds going. Gotta be caffeinated. Tighten these stem bolts in a sequence. You got four fasteners working on your face plate. You wanna make sure they're all sharing the load equally. So I go in a cross pattern, start here, work across, or work across and then up to the other side. Then you eyeball that gap till they're all even. The tool doesn't apply much torque. And I'll we'll get there shortly. I might just leave it snug here because we're gonna need to adjust the angle of our handlebars. Once we get our shifters on, get our wireless SRAM wireless shifters. Slide these guys on. All right. That's a good angle there. We're about five ticks down on the bar, though I don't really ever trust these tick marks. I still measure from the base of the shifter to the end of the handlebar. Go ahead and install the right shifter. Look, we've got a torque spec in here. Eight Newton meters. That sounds a little high, especially for a carbon bar. I usually do about six Newton meters. And there you go, fifth mark there. Get it snug. I'm still going to need to move these around, so I like to get it so it's tight enough where it's not loose. I can move it pretty easily. Take my tape measure here. It's at the base of the shifter. So these are leveled. Kind of align them on the bar as well. Got them where I want them. I'm gonna go ahead and torque these to the bar. Sizing our brake hoses. Nice thing about these uh, E-tap shifters, you only have hoses to worry about sizing. And just use a little silver marker to mark them. You can measure them out as well. Already marked where I need to cut them. We got our barbs. These are our uh, connectamajigs or thingamajigs or whatever you want to call it, majigs. They're barbs and olives. We want to coat them in this DOT grease. Just gonna go ahead and prep them. I'm gonna cut the hoses. 
and install these. I actually had a bike come in for service recently and it did not have this barb installed correctly. It's sitting so it wasn't flush with the top of the barb. I'll show you that here in a minute. And the brake was not functioning. Customer was freaking out about getting his custom bike delivered on time, but it's an easy fix. I gotta stay caffeinated. So I've got my mark here. I've got my nifty Shimano brake hose cutter. Sorry, SRAM. And we may have some fluid leak out here, so I'm gonna hold it with a rag, cut it, throw that little bit out. And we got our our hose. It's cut nice and flush. The thing I like about these SRAM barbs is that they're threaded. And just thread it in. It's a Torx 8 T8. I like my screwdriver handle. It's nice and quick, and smooth. Not a lot of torque that you got to apply to this thing, so I like to torque it in until it's flush. Back it out about an eighth of a turn. Take our olive. Looks like I've got a little extra nylon on the hose here. We'll make sure this is reverse threaded, so we're turning it to the left. I'm gonna thread it on all the way until you see just the tip of the barb. And then turn that eighth of a turn back in. It's nice and flush, secured. Putting a nice coat of grease on the olive here. And then also greasing the fixing nut here. We want to apply torque. We don't want to lose it to friction. We don't want to lose watts or torque. And that affects how the bike is built and how it performs. So we've got our barb and olive installed with our fixing nut greased. And we're just going to slide it into our little lever. Just going to get it snug. Got our little 10 millimeter wrench holding the, the hose here from the shifter. I'm gonna use a little eight millimeter. I was just saying I like to use a flare nut wrench here, but mine has since gone missing since Monday. And we just get it up to torque. Should only be a few threads exposed by the time we get to that torque. Got two threads right there. And then I got this crow's foot here. The fixing nut. This is important. Make sure that olive is compressed into the shifter, into the hose here. Torque specs eight newton meters. Every bike that has disc brakes gets the torque check. Whenever we do a tune up in here, one of those things your brakes work or they don't work. You'd rather your brakes work. Here we go. Click. That's eight newton meters. Spritz it down with some alcohol sure it's nice and clean. And we also need to make sure our hose is not twisted up here. So we've completed the cutting, brake hose cutting and attachment to the shifters. And what I'm gonna do is just tape the hose to the handlebar. Got plenty of room there to move around. It's not uh, rubbing the frame, it's not all bunched up and getting kinked. Tape our hoses to the bar. I start off, put the uh, adhesive side on the end of the bar here, starting right at, like, let's say, four o'clock. And then start wrapping around. Tram and zip make really nice bar tape. This is the Shram Red branded bar tape. It's pretty stretchy. Don't pull it too hard and break it. Finishing our cut here. Connecting the lines that I've marked. So it's got a nice taper to it. 
Well, it took Peter about three minutes or less. It takes me about 15 due to the copious farting around and not having a good tape job like Peter here. Shoes were spotless. Couple layers there to finish it off. Shoes are white. Go ahead. Covers on for the first part. Henna bar wrapping is complete. The bike is starting to resemble a bike. Peter's just installed the wheels. He is about to line up the brake calipers. He torqued down the through bolt first. Just aligning the calipers it's relative to the rotors. Doing the squeeze test. Got our wheels on, got our drivetrain installed, so we're just going to install this chain the way SRAM says to do it. If you're running a two-by drivetrain, start, look at where the chain overlaps here on the biggest cog and the biggest uh, chain ring, and add one inner link and one outer link. So we're going to cut it right here. You saw that. If you're drive riding the one-by drivetrain, you're going to want to add one, two inner links and two outer links, according to SRAM. Colored Sharpies, just color that plate that you want to hit there. So I can grab my chain breaker here. You have to make sure you have an Axis compatible chain breaker so you could damage the chain. We don't want permanent damage. We don't want that. All right, I'm gonna drop it to low. Put it here in the front. Get as much slack as I can possibly get. Route the chain. Of course, I got the flat top on the top side. And then pull the derailleur up. There's a little tab on the inside as they are on all derailleurs. You wanna make sure that chain goes to the inside over the top of the tension pulley, just like so, and then quick link. There's a directional arrow there. This is in the direction of chain travel. Make sure that's on right. Of course, it's got a flat side as well. Also, do not confuse the Eagle uh, quick link with the flat top road quick link. They don't work together. And bring it up top. Hold the rear wheel. And bam, here we are. All right, our batteries are charged. Now we're gonna pair our derailleurs to the shifters. So you hold the rear derailleur until it starts flashing. Front derailleur flashes quickly, so it's paired to the rear derailleur. And then we pair each of our shifters. You see them flash quickly. You see it happen on the derailleur and on the shifter. And then hit that button there. Now we should be paired. Click them. Now we start shifting. I'm gonna set the limits here. These derailleurs are typically in good adjustment right out of the box. That probably isn't always the case. And we also need to set our, our gap here between the tension pulley and the cassette. And Tram's got a nifty little gauge tool. This little guy helps you set the gap there. We got our single sided chain gap gauge. We're running a 36 max rear derailleur. So we're looking at a five millimeter gap between tension pulley and the cassette. Again, usually these things are pretty well set up out of the box, but it can depend on what kind of drivetrain you're running, what bike you're running. Yeah, we're right at a five millimeter gap there. I like to memorize values, so. 36 tooth cog, 33 tooth cog, five millimeters, 30 tooth cog, 10 millimeters, 28 tooth cog, 12 millimeters. You can just use a gauge here. So I'm usually setting up 36 tooth cog 
with this 36 tooth derailleur and just use your five millimeter Allen key as a feeler gauge. Uh, electronic derailleurs do have limits that prevent the derailleur from going too far. The tension screw right here, that's what adjusts the derailleur for, uh, up and down, away from the cassette or towards the cassette. And you've got your low limit here. You just want to adjust it until it just touches the tab so that you don't send that derailleur into the wheel. Could be an expensive day. And I usually set the front derailleur low limit when I'm in the low limit here, just kind of, we don't want to waste unnecessary steps shifting through gears. We're looking for a zero to half a millimeter gap between the inner cage and the chain. Just barely not touching the chain. It's not making noise when you're in that low limit. When you're grinding away, and that granny gear, if you feel like you want to die, you'll make it up that hill. You shift all the way down, we're going fast again. Going to that high limit. I think that gauge got to set a little bit high here. This derailleur needs to come down. Pedals help for this step. I left the pedals behind. High limit, bring it in just ever so slightly. Reverse threaded, hair rub in there, back it off just a hair. And the gap that we want is zero to half a millimeter between the outer plate and the outer chain ring. Yeah, I think this, yeah. No, just test it out. Make sure it goes in quickly and smoothly in between the gears. And I think we're going to have to bring the high limit out just a hair. There we go. Boom. Voila. Just aligning our stem here. You can buy some fancy tools to help you out with aligning your stem. Method I like to use is matching up the tops of the bars with the fork dropouts. It usually gets it pretty straight. Whoops, drop my tool there. Check with both eyes. Usually get a second set of eyes on it because somebody is inevitably going to think it's crooked. Our bars are lined up. Our headset is adjusted. You want to rock it back and forth, make sure there's no play. Turn the bars, try it that way. Let's say a big part of breaking in a bike. Typically, you can expect your headset to loosen up. It's got angular contact bearings here in the headset that will wear in a bit and may produce some play. It's a good thing to check. And also check your hub bearings and bottom bracket bearings. We want to tighten this stem evenly. We've got two bolts on it. Torque spec is five Newton meters for this zip stem, but that's pretty common for most stem manufacturers. And then make sure our bars are relatively level. Set definitely some personal preference involved in how you like your bars set up, but I generally try to set them up pretty flat. So we're all buttoned up. All we have to do is fit the bike to the rider, bed in the brakes, take it for a test ride, and break it in some good gravel roads. Pete, thank you very much for your work today. The bike looks fantastic. Folks, if you're in the Columbus, Georgia area, you really should check out Brickyard Bike Company. I'll link their Facebook page and Instagram below. There is amazing gravel riding in this area and mountain biking and the weather this time of year. 
Primo. Absolutely. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel for content such as this, ride experience videos, no bull gravel bike views and other madness, as all of it is released to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.